Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and with me today is my co-host on the Podiatry Marketing Podcast, Jim McDonald. Jim, how are you doing this morning? Things are good, Tyson. Things are good here in, in Montreal. I hope things are staying cool there in Australia. Yeah, so it, I love doing this. We know what I like doing this, about this podcast the most is we are on opposite sides of the world, yet it feels like we're in the same room because we're talking together all the time. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I actually have kind of the Australian time zones in my head now that we've been doing this podcast and kind of bantering back and forth over the last few months. So it's been a it's been a real pleasure expanding the globe here with you. Yeah, what's good too is because I, prior to COVID, I used to go to America every year, <laughs> and I've always got a lot. I've got a lot of American friends, so you're always in tune to where you have the time zones in the world at different times. So it's whereas it used to really confuse me. I was just oh, I couldn't get my head around it. But I've got this app. I don't know if you've seen this app called Time Buddy. I've seen that. I just asked Siri what time it is in Sydney, Australia or something like that. I used to be a horrible, oh, yeah, yeah. I used to be a horrible, I lived on the West Coast. I lived in Central Time. I lived on the East Coast. So I, I used to struggle just with the US <laughs> time zone. And now you're like uh, the day before us now. So it's always crazy. Uh, I just said that song. Maybe the song Modern Girl. As soon as you said that, but, oh, no, I just use Siri. And all of a sudden, ah, oh, and that song is Modern Girl. But anyway. So today's topic, we are going to talk about your clinic's second website, Google Business Profile. Please elaborate. Yeah, so not a lot of people realize, everyone knows they have their TysonFoot.com. That's your website. That's where, that's what everyone puts time and effort into online yeah. to really build that out and be that digital home on the web for your practice. But Sometimes relatively new over the last five to seven years is what, what used to be called Google My Business. And now they've recently switched the names of it to basically Google Business Profile. And this is the little box that shows up in Google search results when you search your name as a provider or the name of your clinic. So what do people, so you class it as your second website. So you get your main website, which is the one that you're trying to drive everybody to all the time. And we've discussed website elements previously. So you Google profile website, why is that so important? Why it's so important is that when, when people type things into Google, obviously that's the way they look for your address. They look for your clinic. They look for a podiatrist in Cairns, Australia. Everyone's going there and Google's yeah. in incentivized to keep people on Google's platform. They, it used to be the old style of Google was basically there was no ads. There was no map. It was basically 10 blue links that people would click on and leave Google to go somewhere else. But now Google's incentivized with ads and other things to keep that, keep you in the Google ecosystem. So basically they've changed, built, hasn't it? It totally has changed, but that's how they make what billions or that's why they're a trillion dollar company is they, they want to generate revenue on their platform. So Gmail yeah. or Google docs. So they just want to keep you there. They don't want to actually want to send you away anymore. Cause I remember years ago when anytime someone gave you their web address, they'd always say, www or dub 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 and they get you tysonfranklin.com or yeah you're yeah it was weird and then all of a sudden i saw my wife one day she was just typing and she just put the business name dot com you i went where's your dub dub dubs oh, i don't need them anymore oh when did that change and now that was yeah it wasn't that long ago that you had to put in the w's before the website and it did you would type in a name and you get a list of the 10 top businesses and that was it so you're saying now google wants to keep you google fied as much yeah, as possible. They want to keep you on that Google platform. And the way they're trying to do this now, like I said, is you have this almost second website or second page for your practice on their platform. And that's when you type in your, actually, when you type in your own provider name, Jim McDonald DPM, there'll be a small profile and also like Tyson Franklin Podiatry Clinic. You type it in there and you're there. So it has, you know, number one, it has your contact information. So your address is there. You'll have a Google map with directions there. Yeah. So they don't want you to go back. They don't want to send you to your clinic website anymore. They want all the interactions to happen there. So like I said, your address, your phone number, usually there's like a click to do an online scheduling there. Also your hours can be updated mm. on this platform. So when you sign up for a Google business profile, you're given a dashboard and it's this dashboard where you go and you update all that information. If you're going to be gone, for the holidays, you put in the days your clinic is closed. They really want to keep you uh, optimizing your Google My Business listing, or actually your Google Business Profile listing. I keep slipping back to the old ways to be called. 
but that's, you know, and there also you can upload photos of, you know, the, the exterior clinic, uh, or the interior clinic of you treating patients can actually upload photos there. You know, if you don't upload anything, what's going to happen is you're going to get that weird looking like uh, Google car that drives by places. So if you're in like a big multi-specialty clinic or there's bushes in front of your clinic or something, you're not going to get some nice photos. You're going to get some really generic looking thing. So I, I did of... see one. I saw one the other day. I was looking at someone's business and I thought, oh, I'm just going to go for a wander down the street because you could, you can wander down the street with it. <laughs> and, and there's one business that I looked at and all of a sudden it must have been bin day because there's this big two bins out the front of their business and there's rubbish coming out everywhere. And there was like a, there was a dog there and there was a bomby car. And I'm going, that does not look good. No, you well, don't want that the business that particular day. No, you don't want that first impression to be, like you said, like a dumpster fire in front of your practice. Some random yeah. day that car was driving by. Also another important aspect of these Google, my, these Google business profiles is that's where your reviews live as well. And if you look at the color of the review compared to the other information on that, it really draws your eye. You have these gold stars, you have this whatever out of five ranking, and the number of reviews is very clearly spelled out there. So this has all been a small box inside of Google results. Also, this is an area where you'll sometimes see a way to publish on Google's platform called Google Posts. So this is something where if you have, maybe you're providing a new type of care or there's a new podiatrist coming into your clinic. There's, you have a partnership with a physio or a physical therapy clinic and you want to pronounce, yeah. pronounce that to the world. This is an area where you can put those Google posts in there. It'll help you rank and provide some insights into what's going on in your practice. I think another aspect is that they'd also do have a products and services area as well. Just like you have those pages on your website about diabetic care or sports medicine, you really need to either yourself need to build up this Google business profile or hiring someone else that is a Google kind of professional, some of the works in a Google ecosystem to help you optimize that Google business profile to the best of your ability. So how often should people be going back into that profile, updating it, putting in new information, photographs? Is it something yeah. once a month, every six months? Should you do it weekly? What, what, what's your thoughts? Yeah. So generally I would say at least once a week you need to go in there because what's going to happen is that's also going to be the dashboard for your Google reviews and you want to provide personalized replies to yeah. these Google reviews. So it's really important that that happens. So I could at least once a week and at the same time, if there's something new going on in practice or something to announce about the practice, that is a, a kind of an efficient, uh, to be efficient with your time, that is a good time to go ahead and put in that Google post. Maybe you do a newsletter with your practice and that's a way to promote the newsletter or maybe some of the news items from your newsletter can fit into there once a week, but it doesn't have to be every single day. That's a bit much when it comes to the post, but yeah, once a week kind of jumping into that Google, my business profile, once it's built or Google business profile, once it's built out. So once you start putting information into there, does that have an impact on your ranking as you're shown in the organic search? Yeah, so there's some kind of controversy these days, like how much that's going to really cause you to rank. Because what happens a lot of times right now is that, especially if there's a if there's just a location associated with your search, so you say a podiatrist near me or a podiatrist in, in Sydney, Australia, that won't usually show up. Usually it's really name-based. Sometimes your products and services might trigger some things. If you don't have, let's say someone is looking for like plantar fasciitis treatments, and you don't have plantar fasciitis as like one of the symptoms or one of the you know services you provide in there, like it will sometimes, you'll sometimes see these little mentions in the plain Google results that, or even on the maps that like Tyson Franklin Podiatry treats this. And if you don't have it, sometimes it'll actually try to pull that information from your website, say yeah. that information is seen on your website, but is not necessarily in your Google business profile. So there's a, it's a little questionable whether it's a super strong signal ranking for, I would say like kind of symptom queries or when you're asking questions about specific types of treatment, but definitely all your contact information, all your hours, all that stuff is really important because if you get complaints or people say that we'll get into that in a little bit, as far as some of the issues that can happen, if you have a bad Google, my business profile or duplicate profile that leads to someone, a bad user experience or bad patient experience, and they complain, it definitely can have a negative effect on when and how much you're showing up. Yeah. I was going to ask about that because. If you had your business in one location and you move locations, because uh, I've seen some business, with, they've got two Google profiles where they're in two different locations and you just wonder, which is the real one? 
Yeah. So this is a huge problem for a lot of clinics, especially for if someone say has worked with three or four different marketing companies that they didn't like, or, or they started someone in their office started their Google, my business profile, but all those different people have never talked to each other about that. There's this, there's three different, there's three different Tyson Franklin podiatry locations for the same location. We're not talking about a multi-location practice. We're talking about the same practice. Or you moved, right? You moved across town, you moved two blocks this way to a better building. These duplicates can be really negative on your rankings because like I said, if someone ty- types in the name of your clinic and gets a, an address and directions, and then they show up five, 10 minutes before their appointment and you're not there, or like you're, mm. you moved two years ago, but <laughs> no one updated the Google business hey, profile. Be a pain in the ass. It's going to be a pain in the ass for them. So you're probably going to maybe get a negative review. They're going to maybe complain to Google saying that this is not where they're at. So you really have to go in there and nuke or you know, delete those or mer- sometimes even merge these duplicate listings into the same listing to make sure that, yeah, your patients are showing up at the, the right location. The question, a good question, I'll rephrase that, is I heard once to make sure that your details that say are on your website or other directories and also in Google is identical. That if you have, if your business is in shop two slash 494 Mulgrave Road, but then in Google, it just says 494 Mulgrave Road or it just has two slash and doesn't have the shop. You should be trying to keep them as identical as possible. The phone numbers are exactly the same. Everything you do, the con- yeah, the contact email on your website is the same one that you actually have in your Google. Is that still true? Yeah, you have all these like local listing websites or sometimes national websites. That, yeah. And this is a, a kind of a run, I'd say, what's called link building in a way or just kind of referral links. Because if if you have, if if all those things are kept in decent order, and like you said, if it's, if one website says that you're located on 5th Street, another one says you're on 6th Street, and another one says you're on 3rd, it could be confu- it can be a confusing signal to Google and yeah. other search engines. I think that's a, from what I understand, like the... The SEO experts and the, and the folks that I work with and the people that I've, some of the conferences and talks I've been to on this subject say, really, that's less of a big deal. As long as you're, if you're searching on Google and your Google, my business uh, or your Google business profile is updated and verified, and you don't have duplicates running wild out there. I think that's the first place to start. There used to be a lot of people charging a lot of money per month for, there's a, there used to be a system called Yext would charge yeah. people up to $500, $1,000 a month to make sure everything was in sync all the time. And there's been some experiments with people that show that doesn't really work anymore. Google is now smart enough. If you have a, if you put in the information into Google to like disregard some of those other kind of negative signals, because uh, as long as you don't have duplicates, yeah. What about if you have more than one location? Say you have three businesses, could be in the same city, let's say right. Brisbane, for example, a million people or 2 million people. You've got four clinics in North, South, East, and West. Should you have one Google? You might have one website, but for your Google profiles, should you have four different profiles? Yeah. So generally what happens and how this breaks down, I'll break it down not only by location, but also by provider. So you yeah. were in, it gets a little tricky here, but so if you have a physical location somewhere that has its own address, has its own clinic, it should have its own Google business profile. Just so it's on the map, obviously you can flag it a little bit different. Say it's like Tyson Franklin Podiatry Clinic on Fifth Street versus Tyson Podiatry Clinic on Main Street. It just, you can put that in the title. One of the things you also see sometimes, there's multiple doctors, right, at these clinics as well. And if you're a solo practice, it really doesn't make sense to both have a clinic and a, a provider listing, at least to begin with, until maybe you get yeah. a certain number of Google reviews. It's, if you get the point where your clinic has 50 or hundred more than your local competitors. I think it's, I think it's okay then to start a provider one, but like for a while it makes sense to have your, if you're solo provider in a single location, just keep it tight. Cans, cans, podiatry clinic, Tyson Franklin. And then basically what you're doing is you're just sending all the reviews. you you have one location that makes sense over time. You could split those up. That would make sense. I think also you have to be aware of that. Uh, Can you go and split them up after the reviews have been done or no, you just set up a second page and then just kick it off? Yeah. So there's basically what's called like a location listing or like a business listing and then a provider listing. If that's the same thing happens with lawyers, right? There's a, a yeah. law practice and then there's a lawyer listing. So you can have two and that's totally fine. And you can have 
one for a location and then all one for all the different providers, all the different podiatrists in the practice. I will mention though, that you'll see this sometimes maybe when you look up like air conditioning or plumbing or more like home services things, what's called like keyword stuffing in the, like the listing, like in the title of the, the business. So you really need to make sure that your business listing is then your legal business name. It doesn't have to have the LLC or the PC, but it just needs to make sure it's your legal business name because otherwise you run into what's called keyword stuffing. You'll yeah. see like best podiatrist, foot doctor, ingrown toenail <laughs> specialist, cans like Queensland, Australia. Like you'll have all this stuff. And basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to game Google into yeah. like we talked about previously, like when you type in certain things, they're hoping that by stuffing these keywords in there that somehow the Google magic will reward them because like they have all these words there that no one really wants to see. So it's really important. To is make this sure the title of, is this the name of the business? Like the name of the business there? So, well, I might have, say Tyson Franklin, podiatry business coach, okay. my listing they have for Google. But if I put Tyson Franklin, legend, awesome, podiatrist, business coach, marketing specialist, online guru, if you start putting all this stuff in that title, people are thinking, putting all those words in, I'm going to get found more often, but then Google will look at that and go, no, you're a tool. And yeah. Well, so what will they do to you if you try doing that? Yeah. So they'll blacklist you. They'll basically, oh. they'll put a big penalty on you and you'll probably have to go through some process to say, Hey, like that doesn't. Like, I've been like, blacklisted from so many places, but never Google. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that in another podcast. I'm not sure we have, I'm not sure we have the time or the, I'm not sure the audience is quite uh, ready for that one yet, but, no, but yeah, but it is one of those things where you do have to go through a process to be reinstated. It's not easy. And have it be, happening. And, and like I said, this is a powerful platform. A lot of people, whether it's Google ads, Google business profile, people are Googling these services, your name, your clinic's name, and you want to try to stay in the good graces of Google, the best of your ability. So it's really an important component to like, to play within those rules. And, and there's, we could probably even put some of the rules and, and a little bit more information about Google business, my Google business profile in the, the show notes from today. Yeah, that'd be great because I, I think most people listening to this do want to do the right thing. Yeah. And, and you might get the odd cocky person that thinks, oh, I can outsmart Google. I do recall a podiatrist telling me once where they had like these black strips down the side of their website and they used to have all these words in there in black text so no one could see it. And I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure Google could see it. Anyone that knows SEO or knows that there's screen readers, there's way, there's invisible layers where you can see what's yeah. actually happening there. And it's pr pretty obvious to folks. But I think, like I mentioned, I think it is important to to emphasize how important this Google business profile is. And that's why I said it's, it's basically a second website that not a lot of people know they have, because this is, this can be a positive way to grow your practice when you make it a priority. Like I said, if it just, if you just have these like weird Google street view, dumpster fire images, you don't have any pictures of you treating your ideal patient, your logo's not on there, your hours are out of whack, there's no contact information, or it's not updated in a way that feels like it doesn't reflect the branding of your website. It's basically just taking yeah. your website and try to like kind of mash that into what Google has there. If you don't make that a priority and other people bounce from, like it doesn't look professional, they're going to go search in the name of another clinic or another Sydney podiatrist or wherever you're located at. So it's a really important pillar, I would say, of your online presence. Website, good SEO, Google business profile is definitely up there and something that either Someone in your staff that's knowledgeable about this can help you with, or looking for outside help is one way to approach it. Okay. Just one, one more Google question. Well, I like how you circled back around to that it was your second website, because that was what we were talking about, that, Go that Google is your second website. So even if somebody was, if they were just starting their own business now, they've got the website up and... But I think you already touched on this. You just said if they don't have time to do it themselves, they could get the receptionist to do it. Or can, are there people that you, do you look after this sort of stuff for people? Or this is something you go, ah, just do it yourself. It's too easy. No, I think it, at least at the beginning, I think it's something that has to be part of kind of a overall kind of digital plan for practice. And this is something I usually set up for patient, for the clinics I work with to make sure that yeah. patients can find it. Like I said, there's some ongoing things. It's not just a, set it and forget it situation. It does include real responses to these reviews, whether it be positive or negative reviews. 
getting out Google business posts, keeping the hours consistent. As much as we want to make some of these things and be excited and forget it, it is something that requires ongoing information. And sometimes there can be bad actors, even in podiatry and other types of businesses that will try to make duplicate listings of your practice. So you have to have some level of surveillance and some level of like Google cha recently changed its name from Google My Business to Google My or Google Business Profile, right? Google enjoys like having this moving target. So unless someone on your the head. Yeah. It's like going to Costco. I think I mentioned this on a previous podcast, it's like going to Costco, right? The Cheerios were on this aisle last week and now they're like like over by the bread or they're over in a different aisle now. It's it's a bit of a you have to stay recent with the platform to make sure that you can optimize and get the maximal amount of benefit, not only for yourself, but for the, the patients in your local area, because that they're the ones that are looking for that great care you provide. And by making it easier for them, for building a profile that's easy to interact with, like I said, unfortunately, people are not just going to click this blue link and go back to your website and learn about how great you are there. Google is incentivized to keep them on that Google business profile and just have all the interactions work through them. Until like Google gets overtaken or something happens, you have to play their game. And that's just the way it is. No, it makes perfect sense. So I think we've covered this topic pretty well. It's, have you got anything else to finish up with? Or do you think you're, no, you've think given your all? <laughs> I think I've given my all this time. I think there's definitely some areas we can touch base with in future podcasts when it comes to online reviews and strategies around that. There's definitely things like social posting and stuff that we'll talk about. I think that's a good synopsis yeah. of this Google business profile for today. No, nope, that's fantastic. Okay, Jim, thanks for that. And I'll talk to you again next week. All right. Talk to you next time. Okay. See ya.